Three months ago, nomads found her dying in northern Siberia. Walker, Kate Walker, born in New York in the United States. She had an American passport on her. She showed up at the clinic last week. She's recovering. She's fine. You're certain, Olka Efimova. You have to keep her there until we arrive. I will do what it takes. You can count on me, Colonel. Hello, Kate Walker. Well? Uh, hello. My name is Kirk, Kate Walker. Kirk of the Yukol tribe. Do you remember the Yukols? Where are we? My memory's all mixed up. There was a terrible blizzard with snow and ice. And then nothing. We are in the clinic of Dr. Zamyatin, in the town of Valsambor. How did I end up here? We Yukos migrate with our snow ostriches to the sacred lands. It's a long journey. A very special journey. One month ago, we found you dying on a riverbank there in the north. We took you in and our shaman cared for you. Afterwards, we continued our journey. And today, we are both here to finish getting better. You look seriously injured. I'm so sorry, Kirk. I appreciate your concern, Kate Walker. But don't worry about me. Dr. Zamiatin asked a master craftsman from Velsenbor to make me a new leg, and he's going to put it on me when it's ready. It will be like a brand new leg. Why are you tied to that bed? That was the decision of Madame Olga, Dr. Zamiatin's assistant. She says I'm too restless, and it's the only way to make sure I get better. Apparently, it's going to take a long time to make my artificial leg. And in the meantime, my people are without a guide and are waiting for me, with the herd, so we can continue. If you don't mind my asking about your leg, what exactly happened to you? Soldiers bombed the route we were taking with our caravan. For no reason just to frighten us and force us to turn back. I was a bit too close to the explosion. A piece of rock. That's it. You mean the authorities did it on purpose? But why? They think that the snow ostrich migration has no place in today's world, and that my tribe should settle down once and for all. But we will never do that, Kate Walker. That would mean defying the spirits. And the Yukos fear the spirits far more than the soldiers. Why do the Yukols make the journey? My people live in symbiosis with the great snow ostriches, Kate Walker. Their wool protects us from the cold, their excrement feeds our crops, and their meat feeds us. They are also our mounts and beasts of burden, so we must follow them wherever they go. And do they migrate because of the weather? No, Kate Walker. They go to the sacred lands to reproduce. It is an event that only occurs a few times per century. For the Yukols, it is rare to be able to boast of having participated in more than three migrations during one's lifetime. Well, Kirk, I'm delighted to have made your acquaintance. I guess I have to go tell the staff that... I'm awake, I feel fine, and I have no intention of hanging around here. 
Of course, Kate Walker. I'm sure someone will be in the yard. Maybe even Madame Olga. I don't think anybody heard you, Kate Walker. Try using the call button that's located next to the door. Nothing. It doesn't work, Kirk. Hmm. I think I saw some of the staff using it the other day. Take a good look at the mechanism, Kate Walker. Maybe you can find a way to get it working again. Bolted tight. Bolted tight. Well, Kirk, I'm delighted to have made your acquaintance. I guess I have to go tell the staff that I'm awake, I feel fine, and I have no intention of hanging around here. Of course, Kate Walker. I'm sure someone will be in the yard. Maybe even Madame Olga. Right. Let's see if I can repair the mechanism. If you're not sure, maybe the diagram you saw earlier might help.
Finally. Right, now I just have to find a supervisor. Well done, Kate Walker. I'm going to have a bit of a rest now. Please try to come back and say goodbye to me before you go. The elevator to get out. Now, how am I supposed to open it? You're finally awake, number 10. What can I do for you? Well, it seems to me that I'm cured. And now I'd like to be on my way. Given your condition, that would seem somewhat premature and perhaps even unreasonable, number 10. Hmm. Your psychic troubles would seem... I assure you, I feel perfectly fine, Doctor. I don't doubt you. But you were in fact very ill. In your case, we should really be cautious. So you're refusing to let me leave? Oh, no, of course not, miss. I have no intention of abusing any of the prerogatives of my position. Nonetheless, first you must submit to a series of tests that are designed to demonstrate that you have fully recovered. You understand. Please, sit down. I... On that? Yes, yes. Don't be afraid. What the... Don't worry about these restraints. Merely a simple formality that's part of the protocol that Dr. Olga, our supervisor, has implemented. Right. I do believe that we can begin. Now, be so kind as to state your first and last names, age, and place of birth, please. I'm beginning to lose patience. To be honest, Doctor, I don't remember. That's not what the lie detector says. Fortunately, your passport can speak for you. Kate Walker, 29 years of age, born in New York City, United States of America. You're using a lie detector? It's procedure. Please stop worrying and talk to me instead of your friends and family. Are you on good terms with them? Hmm. Your psychic troubles would seem to be significant and... Absolutely. I get along great with my family and everybody I work with. You don't seem to be particularly scrupulous with regard to the truth, Miss Walker. Unfortunately for you, you were rather more talkative than expected while you were in your coma. A real chatterbox you were, and we took careful notes. We know that lately you had a most unfortunate falling out with all the people you hold dear in New York. Look, your mother, your best friend, and even your fiancé. I understand that it all happened after you met Hans Vorlberg. And also a certain Oscar. Tell me about these gentlemen, please. Do I need to repeat the question? Oscar was an automaton and Hans Vorlberg was the person who made him. 
We became friends, and I went with them on a long journey through Europe. There you have it. To be honest, what I'm interested in, Miss Walker, is that during your travels you were in contact with the Yuko people. The nomads who brought you here to Velzenbor. In your opinion, what should we fear from such a primitive tribe of savages who understand neither law nor border? Refusing civilization and settlement. I, I think, Doctor, that the Yukols live in harmony with nature, time, and space. They have no real reason to change the way they live. Now that is an example of typical American idealism. Maybe you should go back to New York right away. I'm sure your brilliant ideas will be justly appreciated there. Answer me, please! I don't intend on going back. Not now. Later. And maybe never. So you intend to continue your journey through our country? A hazardous undertaking with neither goal nor destination. Pity for a brilliant New York attorney who seemed to have a gleaming future. That's not for you to decide, Doctor. For the rest, I think I've demonstrated throughout this interview that I present no psychological after-effects from my injuries. I would therefore like you to authorize my release now. Of course, of course. Do calm down, Miss Walker. I'm sorry, but I'm not used to being interrogated like this. Some years ago, I would have interrogated you in a very different manner, Miss Walker. I grant that I may still feel some nostalgia for the good old traditional methods. You're one of the very last representatives of a world that is fast disappearing, Miss Walker. A disordered world that no one will miss. This key is much like you, unstructured and uncontrollable. If you're able to find a way to use it to leave this floor, then you shall have proved that you are permanently cured. I would like to get my things back before I leave. You will find them there. Turn around. the elevator to get out. Now, how am I supposed to open it? I really tried. I tried to tell them I was a whole lot better. They just wouldn't listen. So you're finally awake. Has Dr. Olga been informed? Have you seen the mammoths too? Go tell the staff, that way maybe they'll believe me. And have you- 
Go hold your head under the ice water in the fountain, Nikita. That'll clear up your damn headaches. Not his time. 